What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. All right? I know, I know they're talking about superhero fatigue going on. Comic book movie fatigue. It's happening. It's out here. And hey, it's hard to argue against it at this point. I mean, Ant-Man and the quantum physics was... It was mediocre, in my opinion. And, like, you know, the Eternals left a bad taste in people's mouths. You know, it was mixed feelings about Thor, Love and Thunder. You know, even Doctor Strange, people were like, I ain't really like it. Then they started coming back around to it and be like, you know what, it was pretty good. And so, and even Wakanda Forever, people were just like, man, it was, it was just too serious and too, like, you know. So it's been a lot of complaints. Ever since, like, Spider-Man No Way Home, you know, so... I get it. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. I know some people kind of feel like Part 2 was just, it was good, but. You know, I would hear that a lot about Guardians Part 2. It was good, but. I enjoyed Part 2. I think the first one was superior than the second one, but uh, I enjoyed them both. And going into the third one, I'm a little bit more confident when the, the same creatives come back. So I knew James Gunn was coming back as writer and director. And that's another thing. Writer, director really means something. You know, because you're getting like a singular vision and voice, you know, when you got the writer director credit. So I feel like it only helps the project, especially since, you know, James Gunn has been there from the start with Guardians and made it what it is today, along with the cast, of course. And so now the stakes are high. There's volume three, the final one. They saying this is the final one. So I'm like, yo, man, who ain't going to make it, man? Who ain't going to make it? That, that's the vibe. Cause it's like, yo, when you know it's the final one and then you hear actors saying like, yo, I'm done playing this character. That's when it's just like, come on, man. Come on, man. And you're getting your eyeballs ready. I'm attached. I'm attached to these characters. Rocket, Drax, Star-Lord, Mantis, Groot, Gamora, even though she died already. So we took that, we took that on the chin, but then she came back, you know what I'm saying? Nebula. Nebula has arguably one of the best character arcs in the marvel universe you know her thor even iron man like nebula's character just like progression is just like crazy good like from what she started out as in the first guardians to where she is now it's crazy it's so dope to see so you know the third movie picks up they're all you know just coexisting and Star Lord is still pining over Gamora. And like, you know, even though she doesn't remember the, the love that they shared in her mind, she's just like, who is this creepy guy that's all over me? No, we, we were in love. Come on. Gamora's already like a, a serious business type of girl. So you can't come in here running up on Gamora and be like, yeah, we was in love. We was buttery. She's like, buttery? That ain't even my style. Even when she was buttery over Star Lord, she wasn't even buttery like that. So it's gotta be tough. So he can't get his act together. He out here drinking, he out here face down. And so they just out here existing, going with the flow, you know what I mean? And so I'm not, this is not a spoiler review. Then they get a, you know, a threat, if you will. Adam Warlock is coming in. He's sent in to capture Rocket. He just came, he came in hot. So it was just like, oh, oh. So now we got Adam Warlock on the scene. Now I'm a fan of the comic books and I was looking forward to Adam Warlock. I'd already got a glimpse of what he was gonna look like because you know his mother was already established within the universe. So now we got Adam Warlock. And in the comic books, the high evolutionary is responsible for creating, you know, her and him. Adam Warlock used to be known by him. That used to be his name. It was a her and a him. And you know, eventually he's like Adam Warlock, you know what I'm saying? The first and last name. You need that government name when you go to the DMV. You can't be at the DMV and just like him. Like him who? I need him person last name i need your social baby so he comes in played by uh, will poulter he's good as adam warlock he was solid you know they made him a little too kind of aloof for adam warlock like adam warlock is a serious he's a serious guy in the comic books and he was an instrumental piece in the infinity gauntlet and the infinity war in marvel like he was he was instrumental in the whole the whole beef with thanos adam warlock was instrumental Matter of fact, he was the one that first killed Thanos. He encased him in like a statue. He just made him a living statue. 
And so Adam Warlock was responsible for that because he came out of the Soul Gym. And also Thanos was in, was responsible for Adam Warlock's death before that. So it's just a crazy dynamic between Adam Warlock and Thanos that we didn't get to see because they told everything out of order for movies. But Adam Warlock comes on the scene, the story pretty much revolves around the high evolutionary who's responsible for creating the rocket we know now. We get to find out how Rocket became Rocket in this movie, and that's due to the high evolutionary. So he's the main villain in this movie, and he's never boring. This is a villain that, you know, he's, he's over the top but he's never boring. It was like, you might find his motives kind of typical of a movie villain in a comic book movie, but he was never boring to watch. And you know, there's similarities, you know, he, he's got the purple elements. It's just like Kang all over again, kind of sort of. But for me, he's a little bit easier for me to follow than what Kang is doing. Cause Kang got so much going on, I get kind of lost. But High Evolutionary, like, oh, I see what you're doing. You're trying to make the perfect, like species, that's his goal. Like I can make the perfect species that can exist within its own thought processes and creation and invention. I'm trying to invent something that can also invent something else rather than just memory. So I was like, all right, I get you. I see what you're doing. You're crazy, but I see what you're doing. And it's pretty much essentially about them trying to get Rocket back and they recruit, you know, Gamora and you know, they go to the, the Ravagers, you know, Gamora's all deep with the Ravagers now. So they're like, yo, can we get Gamora to help us get Rocket back? And so she's like, I'm down, but I'm gonna just do this and I'm going back to the Ravagers and Star Lord's like, man, come on, man, we out here. And it's just good to see Nebula coming to her own as a full member of the team where she's fully embracing it. Like she's no longer in conflict with her, within herself about who she is and, and and Nebula's character arc is just fantastic to watch. That's essentially the, the, the crux of the story here. You know, you see Groot at a different growth stage in his life. So the gang's all back together and Drax is still Drax and Manus is still like at odds with Drax. Just like, yo man, you just, she gets frustrated with Drax cause he, he's, He's dumb, but he's so much more than that. And she's just like, mm, just get it together. So the character dynamics between the team, is just like, you feel it. It means something. It, you, you, you feel the friendship and the family. Like, so everything that they're doing, it has a little weight to it. Like, you know, you really want them to get Rocket back. You really want to know his origin story on how he became who he became. And let me tell you something, man. I was emotional on these Rocket flashbacks. It was just... If you don't get emotional watching the Rocket flashbacks, you ain't got no soul. You, you, you just ain't got no soul. I don't even know how to sugarcoat. You have no soul. If you wasn't just emotionally invested in Rocket's storyline. and like Rocket is already my favorite Guardian. So now to see how he became who he became, it's, it's heartbreaking. And this movie is dark. This movie is dark. And I like the fact that it is dark because I feel like Disney has softened up the MCU. I feel like ever since Disney purchased Marvel, I feel like they've been getting softer and sillier. Now the Guardians have always been silly, but this one, I feel like they're not as silly in this one. There's some silly moments, of course. But in this one, it's, it's more dark, more serious. The stakes are high. So it's a, there's, a, there's a nice mixture of the comedy that's still there, the stakes, the emotional, like, you know, the emotional load, everything was firing on all cylinders and the movie looks amazing. Like the special effects, the set design, the set pieces, all amazing. And the action is dope. Like there's stakes involved in the action. It meant something. I was excited. I was like, yo, what's gonna happen next? Who's gonna survive? What's going on? And there's an amazing action sequence in a hallway of a ship while Beastie Boys plays. That action sequence is, is one of the best I would argue it's one of the best action sequences in the whole MCU uh, lineup. Like if we made a top 10 action moments of all the MCU films, this one goes in there in my opinion. It's somewhere within that top 10. Probably Endgame will probably win just because that was a, that was a sporting event in a movie theater. But this action sequence in particular, fire. Phenomenal. Yeah, man. I had a really good time with this movie, but forget all that, man. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Guardians of the Galaxy 3 
four and a half saxophones out of five. It was a good time, man. I enjoyed it. The action was good. The comedy was good. The special effects were great. The the acting was superb. I don't, I don't really have too many bad things to say about this movie. Um, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, the music was great. As usual, they emphasized the music. And it was just a great experience. And I think I want to go back and see it a second time. I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna double up. I think I'm gonna double up, man. I don't know, man. I'm still thinking about it. All right, y'all. That's my review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below. Also, I want to know who's your favorite Guardian. Who is your favorite Guardian, man? Let me know in the comment section below. And also, which one is your favorite Guardians movie out of the three? Now, rank them for me. Rank them for me in the comments section below. Also, do you agree with me? Do you, do you think that Disney has changed the feel of Marvel product? Let me know that in the comments section as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.